Let me start the show off with a reminder to go check out my fantastic sponsor, PalomaVerdeCBD.com. They've got a new website, so go check it out. And if you enter in the promo code FACTS at checkout, you get a 25% discount. Carlos and Vanessa are awesome people. They have been really great to the Liberty Movement. They've sponsored a number of shows, not to mention the fact that the product is excellent. I've got the gummies and the tinctures that I use regularly. We're actually starting my son on a regimen of the uh, the gummies to try to help with some of his ADHD and IBS that he has issues with. My wife loves the salve. She's had back problems and shoulder problems, and, and we can rub that salve on her shoulders, and it just makes everything feel infinitely better almost immediately. So please, be sure to go over, check out Carlos and, and Vanessa at PalomaVerdeCBD.com. Enter in the promo code FACTS at checkout for 25% off your order. This episode will be completely taken out of context. Welcome to the Fact Check This podcast. All right, Fact Check This podcast, and today I'm going to earn as well. Where am I today? Today I'm in San Marcos, Texas. I am down here for the... Uh, RU event at Buck Johnson's place, and I figured since I'm alone in a hotel with nothing else to do for at least another three hours, I may as well bang out an episode. So, gonna take a look at a Politico article, and everybody knows how much I love Politico because everything they post is so great. They do all kinds of fantastic fact-checking of all the misinformation that I like to spread, and uh, usually their fact checks are complete crocks of shit. But I really like this article today. We'll see uh, see if they fact check themselves on this one at a later date. Top COVID experts privately urge Biden administration to scale back booster campaign. I know, probably other than me, very few people watched the entirety of the eight hour booster uh, panel that the FDA had. It was interesting and enlightening and kind of refreshing to see it and hear it done that way. Um, a lot of my like, clips and stuff that are being pulled from some of the the open session part of it are good and important and like it's it is stuff that is medical professionals who are sharing stuff with the with the FDA board or the the panel but they're not they're not FDA board members and that's something that there is definitely some disconnect there that people will share that stuff and say oh the FDA board is saying this not exactly but if you, if you get past that part, because that's during the first half of it, if you get past that part and you, you watch the last two and a half to three hours of it where the, the actual FDA board like comes together and they question, they themselves ask questions of Pfizer and the Pfizer representatives, and then they have some deliberation and back and forth where they discuss all of the things with the boosters. I mean, they laid in on the Pfizer reps. They laid in on the people who have been doing the like the research and stuff in Israel. I, it was that part I think was way, way more important and and more meaningful than the stuff where people were sharing stuff with them. Like like the 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 information and the research that some of those medical professionals who were sharing in that open open forum we're bringing forward, it was good stuff and it's stuff that people need to know. And the level of scrutiny that that stuff's undergone is, you know, could be questionable, but it, it, it's it's valid information. But the, the end, the last three hours or so where they really grilled Pfizer and the researchers from Israel, and I mean, they, they went at them hard. And every, and, and the really, the really interesting part about that was the 
especially the Pfizer people, they didn't have anything good to say. Like they, they were effectively, they were clamoring to defend their own position as to why all of this stuff is a good idea without providing anything of substance to back any of what they had to say. The, the only, the only data or evidence or, or proof that they, that they could show the FDA panel itself just shredded that stuff. They're like, okay, so, so you, you want us to look at this data set of these numbers and statistics that you've come up with, but that's a really specific data set that only looks at this, 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 and this. Why aren't you looking at all of these other things? Like they really, really went after them. So that was encouraging. So then I get to looking at this article. The top COVID experts privately urged Biden administration to scale back the booster campaign. And I'm just going to read uh, at least a portion of it. And then we'll kind of take it from there. A vocal contingent of prominent doctors and scientists are pressing the Biden administration to scrap its plans to provide booster shots to all previously vaccinated adults, according to five people familiar with the matter. Several of these outside experts, including some who advised President Joe Biden's transition team, objected to the administration's approach during a private off-the-record call last week with federal health officials. Current U.S. data on vaccine performance does not justify using boosters widely to reduce the risk of breakthrough infections and slow the virus spread, experts said. They told officials on September 22nd, on a September 27th call, including Biden's chief medical advisor, Anthony Fauci, White House policy advisor, Cameron Webb, and the head of the Food and Drug Administration's Center for Disease Control and Prevention, that the shots would be given to people most at risk of, of severe COVID-19 to reduce hospitalizations and deaths. The growing split between Biden's team and the outside health experts on boosters threatening to disrupt a key source of su support the administration has relied on to sell its vaccination drive to the American public. Biden, who took office pledging to follow the science, until recently enjoyed the enthusiastic backing of eminent physicians and researchers as he attempted to crush COVID-19 and revive the U.S. economy. But the White House's sweeping vision for boosters has weakened those ties. And I'm not going to go on past that. That's, that's the... Uh, the important part of, of the article, and I'll link to the rest of it in the show notes if you'd like to check that out. The interesting thing that's happening is, and it, I posted a, a link to a video of a number of doctors, um, shoot, I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. I'll post a link to that as well in the show notes. It was like effectively the inventor of the M, mRNA uh concept and and who helped put it together and they're talking about how this heavy push and over reliance on vaccination is actually making the problem worse not better uh, it may in fact be promoting the variants that we're seeing like we're seeing a much more rapid development of variants with COVID than what you see with other very similar diseases like flu and stuff like that. And it's because of this really heavy over-reliance on vaccinations because the vaccines are based off of the original COVID, the original COVID variant. So <clears throat> as they keep pushing out more vaccines and more boosters for this original thing, it drives more diversity in the virus so that it keeps mutating and developing while the vaccine still does nothing. One of the doctors said it was akin to telling your entire you know, nursing staff that they have to be vaccinated, but then saying, yeah, but we've got all these vaccines from five years ago on the freezer that are still good. We need to get rid of those. So we're going to vaccinate you with those. And and like this is the logic that that's being used and this is something that anybody who's willing to admit and and say yes like this is a this is a flu-like virus obviously the way these types of things work is they mutate and they develop variants and new strains and over time they become less deadly as they become more virulent and if you're going to use a vaccination that's based off the original, 
I mean, they were already talking about variants in July, August, and September of 2020. When it had, like, there were at least two variants that they knew of by the end of September of 2020. But all of the testing and the development of these vaccines was based off of what it started as in March, April, May. So how, how did like how did it make any sense to anybody who can look at this with a <clears throat> any level of you know critical thinking? that making a vaccine based off of the original iteration of a virus that has already started to mutate before the vaccine has even been released. And it, obviously it's going to continue to mutate. And as it mutates, each mutation is less susceptible to the vaccination. But they wanna roll out boosters for a vaccine that is ineffective, that doesn't, isn't designed to fight the specific uh, variant that we're seeing right now, that isn't going to fight the variants that are coming. Uh, I've talked about it before. There's a, the uh, move, move variant that's going through Columbia right now. And, or I, I guess it's, it's waned at this point. Uh, they kind of, they went through that season. They had their about a month and a half of everything spiked. Uh, especially cases, deaths spiked a little bit, but it never hit like, you know, critical mass that it was at in, in the height of the pandemic previously. But the, the cases spiked way up there and then it leveled off and went away. And it was completely, I, they, they noted that this move variant is completely vaccine resistant. Like it, the vaccine does absolutely nothing to it. At least with, with Delta, it seems as though there may potentially be some possible benefit, but they can't really tell you what it is or how much of a, of a benefit it is. It, it's there, you know, most of this is throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. <sighs> Which, it, which is to some extent the way science is done. But if that's the science that we're going to rely on for making decisions for the entire country or the entire world, obviously, like that's that's not a good strategy, right? I, I'm, I can't be the only one that sees that. Uh, but so with this this move variant that went through Colombia completely vaccine resistant. So, and it, it, if I was, if I'm following it correctly, and if I, if I miss something on this, somebody tell me, like, uh, I want, <laughs> I want to be fact-checked on this stuff, uh, legitimately fact-checked on it, not, not, a, not somebody post a uh, article that says this is wrong in the first paragraph, and then the entire rest of the article goes on to explain why it's not actually wrong, we just don't like what you said. <laughs> uh, Columbia just kind of, let it run its course because it was completely vaccine resistant. And like, well, if you know that the vaccine doesn't work, what the fuck are you going to do, right? You're like, you're not going to keep pushing a vaccine that doesn't work when you openly admit and know that it doesn't work. So they let it run its course. And like a month and a half later, it was gone. They went back to like nothing as far as deaths and uh, new cases and all that went. Like it, nice big spike bottom dropped out of it and life goes on and the the crazy thing about all of that is if you continue to look at different countries different parts of the world the ones that have for lack of a better way of putting it just gave up and said this is endemic this is the new flu and we have to learn to live with it they're having much higher success rates in mitigating it i think mean, it'll spike and then it goes away it's like a normal flu season 
the countries that keep pushing more and more on the side of vaccination and locking down and all of this stuff, it just keeps, it just keeps dragging on. And there's a lot of people, a lot of really smart people who have been talking about that sort of thing for a very long time, talking about how it's the nature of this type of a virus and also human anatomy and just the way nature works in and of itself, that if you're outside, you're active, you're getting sun, you're getting fresh air, you're doing things, you're moving around, you're naturally going to be healthier. You're naturally going to be exposed to little things that get you a little bit sick, but it helps build up your immunities. We're creating a fucking generation of bubble boy children. Like kids need to be in school together, spreading germs and getting sick and getting over it and moving on with life. We are crippling the immune system of an entire generation right now. We're crippling the immune system of people who cannot afford to have their immune systems crippled. And being out for average adults, being outside, moving around, doing stuff, being active, you know, being exposed to things and people. That's healthy, normal behavior. It's good for you. It's the reason... It's the reason why we have an immune system to begin with. Like our natural immune system is always going to be infinitely better than anything that you can inject into yourself, and which has been completely lost in all of this for the last 12 to 12 to 16 months. Like it, 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 and honestly, for the last, from the beginning of it, I mean, they started pushing the lockdowns and the bullshit right off the bat. And while I understood the reasoning behind it at the beginning, as soon as that 15 days to flatten the curve came to an end and the lockdowns and the mass mandates and all the bullshit didn't end, like, I, I was good with the first 15 days. That's why 15 days? Like, what's the, I, I'm, I'm still not sure what the logic behind that is. And the really crazy thing is, like with the 15 days, with the six feet social distancing, with the masks and, and all of that stuff, there's not good scientific, like for all the trust the science fucking morons, there's not good scientific backing for any of that stuff. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure the CDC has been very open and honest about the fact that the six feet social distancing thing is just completely made up arbitrary number. Nobody, like, that's, that's not something that's been researched there's no like developmental plan on that it was just something that sounded good and the 15 days to flatten the curve like uh, it's the same way there's not some uh you know in-depth study that shows that 15 days is the necessary amount of time for something like this to to die off or whatever which and obviously it didn't fucking work so uh and this is going to get 100% it does look at the YouTube, the video taken out from YouTube, but fuck it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's no good scientific evidence that the mask actually work. It, they said to use common sense. Use common sense. Use common sense. Except that I've read studies and I, like, I actually did the research, not, well, I, I actually did the research of wearing a fucking mask. So this is an interesting thing, and, and there's been a lot of videos with this. I'm going to derail on the mask thing. There was a guy who was a, or who was a painter, and he puts on like a, a cloth gaiter, and then he also has an N95 mask, and he has another mask on top of that just to really show how fucking useless this is. And he does his painting, and then he takes off all of his masks, and his face still has paint all over it. So if a paint particle, which is much, much, much bigger than a viral particle, can get through all of that, what's your little dumbass cloth mask doing? What's your little surgical mask that you get when you walk into the building and 
at work or at the store that you're going shopping at that they're handing out to everybody that it, everybody puts their hand in the box and touches. What is that doing? I, I've mentioned it multiple, multiple times, but there's an, an actual study that was done by Fauci and another guy that showed that the only way that masks work is in a sterile surgical setting. That's it. We don't live in a sterile world. I've done I've done the mask research. I've done that myself. Uh, so I used to work in grain, and we would fill these flat storage buildings with grain. And the idea of filling that flat storage building is you got a big conveyor that runs the length of the building, and it's got these big trippers that throw grain off onto the sides, and you fill the building up. So the problem that you run into is somebody has to be, and it's a, it's a closed building. And even when it's not, like even when the big doors are open and there's airflow, it's a big building. Like there's not, you're not getting that much airflow. Uh, and if you've ever been around a farm, dust or grain is extremely dusty. So you're inside of an enclosed building watching watching this conveyor and these trippers run. And you have to be in there the whole time to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So you wear a mask to you know, keep from choking on dust the whole time. And when I was running the conveyor and filling these buildings, I got to be the guinea pig who tested different types of masks. And we tried, we tried every different type. The most expensive mask that you could get that had supposedly offer the most protection humanly possible. And the cheap, you know, paper masks that just uh, buy in bulk. And at the end of the day, whether it was the top of the line, most expensive, best mask you could get that would supposedly keep everything out or something that was kind of a middle of the road, just a decent mask that would keep the dust from getting through. Within 45 minutes, I could taste dust. You could, like, I could feel it on my tongue. I could taste it in my mouth. Didn't matter what the seal was. And at that time, I didn't have all the facial hair. And, and you know, that's another thing of, uh, for people with facial hair like that, that disrupts your mask being able to, to do it do the job properly. And at that time I didn't have all the facial hair. So like I had good tight fit seals on my face with these different masks and it never failed. Within 45 minutes, I could taste dust. Dust particles are exceptionally larger than a virus particle. So if, if that's getting through, what are these masks doing to stop a dust particle? And, I, and, and even the best, the absolute very, very best mask that I've ever used, like the, the ones that uh, OSHA requires you to do an annual fit test on to make sure that it's properly sealed, like the, the rubber canister style respirator type masks, which I've worn those and actually done. Uh, if you've never had the experience of doing a, a OSHA fit test on your respirator, you are missing out on all kinds of fresh hell. They, make, they basically put you in a fucking gas chamber with your, they make sure that your mask is on properly and fitted. And they basically stick you in a gas chamber and then they pump this stuff in there until you can taste it. And like tell them that you need out to make sure that you're getting a proper seal on your mask. And this stuff is fucking awful. I, So yeah, if you've never if you've never had the joy of that experience, uh, don't. But even with those, even with those, in a you know whatever environment, it always gets through. I mean, as as is you know evident by evidenced by the OSHA fit test, that no matter how tightly fit you have it, it's gonna get through. And these virus particles are smaller than any of the stuff that we're testing that on. 
So what makes you think your mask does a goddamn thing? It's, it's insane. It's insane. So none of this stuff follows actual science. None of it follows actual research or, or if there has even been any research at all, if they're not just screaming common sense while not backing that up with anything that's, I mean, what, what where is the common sense in stifling your ability to breathe to protect you from a respiratory virus? Like, choking yourself out, recycling everything that's coming out of your mouth back in. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, there, there is no science that's actually being used. And the science that's out there, I'm, I mean, if we go back to the political article, all of this conversation is leaked stuff from people who didn't want to go on record because they know, they know that the actual science that's coming out of this, the actual information that's behind this, says that the administration, the CDC, that they are wrong, that they're taking the wrong direction, that they're taking the wrong approach, and that they need to stop. But nobody has the fucking balls to just come out and say it because they know as soon as they do, they'll be called science deniers, or they'll be called anti-vaxxers, or they'll be, they'll lose any position that they have because they don't push the narrative. And at the end of the day, that's what you've got to remember. The only thing in any of this that's actually important, the only thing that any of them actually care about right now is that fucking narrative. That's what's going to keep them rich and in power. That's what's going to keep them holding the reins on all of us and dictating how we live our lives. Have a good day, everybody.